Welcome to another Quarter Challenge. In this video, we're going to take on X-Men Arcade 6-Player Quarter Challenge. Each player is going to have $5. That makes $30 total as a group. And we're going to see if we can take down X-Men. And stay tuned later in the video, I'm going to show you how to map all 6 players. 4 players to your control stick and buttons, and 2 players to your Xbox controllers. Alright, 2 screens, 6 players, X-Men Quarter Challenge. Sit back and enjoy. If you're playing X-Men on your home arcade, your Arcade 1, your Extreme Home Arcade, your Retrocade, or anything else, you probably have numerous different versions of the game. There's two-player versions of the game, four-player versions of the game, and six-player versions of the game. We're going to play six players, so we get the double screens. I'll show you later in this video the difference between the four-player and the six-player, the single screen and the dual screen, and I've recruited five players who have never played this before. Midnight, Robo, Shinobi, Panda Samurai, and Valkyrie. So we'll see if they can tackle X-Men six player arcade. For my setup, I have to have the two Xbox controllers plugged in and started before I enter the game. Otherwise those controls will reset. So I have a little note in the bottom left corner to remind me, we're gonna cue those up and here we go. Midnight is going to be Cyclops, Endgame is going to be Colossus, Shinobi is going to be Wolverine, Robo is going to be Storm, Panda Samurai is going to be Nightcrawler, and Valkyrie is going to be Dazzler. Order up! In the 21st century, evil mutants led by Magneto aim to destroy the world. Humans can do nothing against the power of the evil mutant. The only hope is X-Men. Go and save the city. All right, here we go. Six players, two screens, Sentinels right out the gate. Let's do this. You have one button to do your normal attacks, which you can also attack people when they're on the ground. You also have one button to do your jump. You can do your jump attack button. And then you also have a third button that does your mutant power. Now you get one free mutant power and you can pick up additional power-ups. You can actually use your mutant power as many times as you want until your last hit, but it will use up your life bar. So you definitely don't want to spam it and you want to use it cautiously because it's risk reward. Is it worth doing it using some of my life to take out a whole bunch of enemies or would I rather try to battle the enemies and risk maybe taking more hits? So every player gets two lives. I just died there with Colossus, but I have my second life, so I don't have to insert another quarter. Once this life's gone, then I'm gonna have to do it. Man, look at all these enemies on screen. Awesome. There you go, you can pick up some energy to refill your health and an additional mutant power up to do an additional mutant power. Here Wolverine just got defeated and Dazzler did as well, but both of them are on their first life, so they get a second life before they have to quarter up. Ooh, Cyclops just got taken out. Midnight's gonna have to quarter up. And even though $30 combined for all of us does sound like a lot, you gotta think about it. If all of us died and all of us had to put in quarters, it'd be $1.50 just for all of us continue once. And they definitely ratchet up the difficulty and the amount of enemies. Look at this, there's 14, 15 enemies on screen. Perfect use of the Colossus mutant power right there. Take them all out and get us ready for the first boss, Pyro. Pyro will I love in this game how the bosses come out and actually taunt you, but if you want, you can go up and take them out just like we did there, punch them in the face before they could finish the taunt. Nice optic blast there, Cyclops, way to go. Oh wow, Pyro fighting back, cleaning house. Pyro is definitely easier on the four player one screen X-Men cabinet because everybody's on the one screen and your mutant powers are gonna hit them easier. Whereas here he can easily leap from screen to screen and avoid your mutant power attacks and actually get away from all of you and then hit you all with one of his flamethrower attacks.
All right, we finally have him flashing. We're on the home stretch of the boss battle. We need to team up, take him out, and use any mutant powers when the opportunity arises. Here we go, team. Pyro is not gonna go down easily, that's for sure. Oh wow, he is absolutely assaulting us. Come on, X-Men. Come on, let's get him in the corner. Jump kick from Colossus, there we go. Come on, Storm. There we go, finish him. Pyro will not go down. This is definitely the longest I think I've ever battled Pyro. Come on! There we go, Cyclops. Nice! Bad death there for Colossus because your life refills in the next level. So after the first stage, we spent $3.25. Not too bad, although Pyro definitely gave us a run for our money. Panda Samurai as Nightcrawler is still on the first quarter, so that's awesome for the team. Meanwhile, Cyclops and Colossus both have 75 cents in. They have the highest amount. Colossus does have the lead for most eliminations with 36, which is easily first place, but Colossus has been using his mutant powers more often, which has allowed for more deaths, but it's risk reward. Do you use your power up, clear house for everybody else, or do you allow everybody to take damage? It's definitely something you need to think about, and while you can play this on your home arcade and just keep quartering up and it's not real money so it's no problem if you just want to spam your mutant powers but we're definitely playing with a $30 limit. Robo has Storm right there, perfect strategy using the mutant power to take out eight guys with that one tornado. Yes it took Storm down to one hit left but that possibly saved the rest of us a lot of hits and possibly a couple quarters. Nice work Robo. Dazzler with the quarter up, Colossus, Wolverine, Storm, Nightcrawler, all dangerously low on health. Come on team, here we go. Midnight just kicking the crap out of that robot. Nice, picks up the energy, steals it away from Wolverine. Wolverine and Cyclops always had a feud over Jean Grey in the comic books in the cartoon animated series, so maybe that's coming back here. Or maybe Cyclops just thought Wolverine was gonna start healing himself. Not sure. Nice use of the Nightcrawler teleport attack there. Nice use of Colossus's mutant power there. Even though Colossus is low on health, it was worth it so that everyone else could avoid taking damage. Nice use of Wolverine special there. Way to go, Shinobi. With that quarter up for Colossus, endgame's up to a dollar. All right, let's get these mutant power-ups. Come on, guys. Oh, we can't go back. We just wasted three mutant power-ups. Those definitely could have came in handy. Here's boss fight number two against the Blob. Nothing. Nothing stops the Blob except for Dazzler, apparently. Way to go, Valkyrie, using your mutant power to take him down. Oh, wow, maybe nothing does stop the Blob. He just took us all out. Wow, talk about an onslaught. Absolutely, the game was like, we're taking your money right here, right now. All right, let's gang up on him. Mutant superpowers, beat him while he's down. All right, specials, let's do this. Oh, we're getting our payback on you now, Blob. All right, he's flashing. Oh, takes us out, choke slam. Man, what a matchup this is. Awesome. And down goes the Blob. Unfortunately, Cyclops had to quarter up, doesn't get the health refill bonus. However, Colossus, Storm, and Dazzler do. We have been taken by Magneto. However, we had time to locate their base on Island M. Destroy it. This definitely reminds me of the Savage Land from the X-Men animated cartoon. However, this is called Island M. Through two stages, we're doing really well. Nightcrawler's the leader with only 50 cents put in. Meanwhile, Colossus has 57 kills, which is also the leader. And as a team, we're $5.50 in. We're doing really well, but there's a ton of tough bosses to go, including a devastating boss gauntlet. Definitely some interesting background music for this level.
And here's some interesting enemies. I better take them out quickly. Here we go. There's some energy. We definitely need it. Storm, see if you can grab that. Hurry up before it disappears. Nice. Valkyrie comes in clutch with the Dazzler's Sonic Light Blast. Oh, yeah. Flying enemies are always the worst in games. Let's take these guys out. With two screens, six players, and all these different enemies on the screen at one time, it's definitely chaotic and really hard to keep track of your life gauge, as well as your mutant powers, as well as power-ups. Who needs them? Unlike the Turtles games, where typically you can take a break, look up there, okay, Donnie needs it, Leo needs it, go get it. Here, it's survival of the fittest. Grab it if you can. If you're closest to it, get it. Here, Storm tosses a guy right into Colossus. Friendly fire takes out Colossus. Ouch. There we go. Here's another dozen enemies on screen. Crazy stuff. I love it. And here we get our first taste of Magneto on Island M. I like the little in-game cutscene transition, and then you're onslaughted by all these mud creatures. This next boss fight's a fan favorite and one of my friend's favorite characters. Wendigo. Nice, Midnight with the Cyclops optic blast at point blank range. Take that, Wendigo. Wendigo versus Wolverine, the movie writes itself. All right, X-Men, we need to use some of our mutant powers here. Let's do this. Oh, you missed, Wolverine. Wendigo's flashing now. It's the final stretch for Wendigo. Here we go. Oh, here we go. We got him down. We got him stuck in the corner. Let's take him out. We're absolutely pummeling him in the corner. Come on, let's finish him right here, right now. Let's do this. Come on, here we go. Nice. Go and rescue Kitty from the cave. Through three stages, we're sitting at $7.25 as a team. Storm and Nightcrawler have the fewest quarters in at $0.75. Cents. And Storm made it through the entire level, including the Wendigo boss battle, with only dying once and not having to put a single quarter in. Nice work, Robo. Robo only had one hit left at the end of the Blob boss battle, but made the most out of the health refill in between stages, as well as the energy power-ups throughout the stage. Nice work again, Robo. Endgame as Colossus is the leader of eliminations, 111 eliminations, and that makes sense. I've been utilizing my mutant powers a little bit more often than I probably should have at the sacrifice of some of my energy, which has resulted in a few extra deaths, but I do believe it's been worth it. Oh, mutant power up, gonna grab that and use it right here. Nice. Nice use of Storm's power up right here. More pesky flying enemies. And here we go with the mandatory elevator level. A nice touch in this game is when you knock him down on the ground, you can go over and pummel him into the ground as Colossus. Nice. Some of the other characters like Nightcrawler will jump on him, and I believe Storm will actually take her lightning rod and shock him. It's really cool when each of the characters have different moves like that. Cyclops, Colossus, Storm, Dazzler, all low in health. Here you can see Nightcrawler pounce on a guy while they're on the ground. Nice use of Dazzler's mutant power there. Way to go, Valkyrie.
All right, watch out for these sentinels chucking these boulders. I remember one story as a kid, one of my best friends and I, we went to an amusement park and we went to go ride the roller coasters and all the rides, but then we went into a random arcade and saw that they had the X-Men arcade game and we ended up staying there hours playing that and beating it and it was so much fun. And my friend's mom was like, why aren't you guys riding rides? We came here to ride roller coasters. And we're like, what are you talking about? This is awesome. This game is amazing. There's Kitty Pride. we have to rescue her. And who's in the way? None other than Nimrod, who came from a future timeline back when Bishop came to this timeline. All right, we got Nimrod flashing already. Let's keep this up. Oh, some nice uses of specials here. Storm, Dazzler, Cyclops, back to back to back. Oh, nice, Cyclops again, Colossus. Everybody's in on the action. We're taking you down, Nimrod, nice. Storm benefited from the health refill earlier. This time she had to eat a quarter. You must rescue the professor. So this is the start of stage number five, and you can fall in the pits? Dazzler, what are you doing? It takes an entire life if you fall in the pit, so you definitely don't want to do that. Cyclops, what was that? Coming into this level, I was gonna say we're doing really well. We're $9.25 in. However, now I'm a little worried about these pits. Thankfully, Shinobi as Wolverine was able to complete the entire last level without having to put in a quarter. So that definitely helped us out. So our current money count is Cyclops with $2.25, Colossus with $2, Dazzler with $1.75, Wolverine with $1.25, and then Storm and Nightcrawler each with a dollar. Colossus leads with 182 kills. All right, if no one else wants that energy, I'm gonna take it. And here we go, another elevator leading to another boss fight against Emma Frost, AKA the White Queen. The White Queen, well. Emma Frost had a long run as a villain in the Hellfire Club, but she later dated Cyclops, joined the X-Men, and had a very awesome character arc change. Nice use of your tornado there, Storm, right as Emma Frost was gonna use her mutant power. Nightcrawler takes down Emma Frost, nice. But the level's not over yet. These little robot bugs can be pesky too. Oh, watch out, we have a drive-by, come on! All right, let's take him out. Dazzler, watch out for that pit! Robo, nice use of the storm tornado again. Even with two screens of real estate, you're still battling guys off screen, just like the old school Final Fight days. Nice use of Cyclops' optic blast there, Midnight. Way to go. I love all these Sentinels are pouring in from the background up there. Oh, Wolverine clears them out. Nice work, Shinobi. And here we have this giant Sentinel. I always thought this was Master Mold who created the other Sentinels. However, all these Reavers, Bone Breakers are coming out of him instead. I always love when these old school games did things like this with these massive characters like Krang in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, when he comes up in the city in the first level. So awesome. And here we have Juggernaut. We saw him earlier kidnap Kitty Pride, and he's an absolute beast. He has this bazooka, and then he just runs over you like a football player. You gotta knock off his helmet. It's his only weakness. Four. 
Juggernaut came out swinging. He's taking our quarters left and right. Let's dish some damage back to him. We got his helmet off. He's finally weak. He's flashing. There you go, Dazzler. There you go, Wolverine. Let's do this. He's just annihilating us. He's so fast and so powerful. What an impact. Juggernaut runs into Colossus and Wolverine and they all go separate ways. He is absolutely trucking us right now. Running over us back and forth, launching rockets at us. Crazy. Oh, well, finally, he was definitely the unstoppable juggernaut today. All right, it's Professor X. X-Men, nice job. Magneto is over there. Follow me. So Professor X knows where Magneto's at. Let's take him down. That wasn't Professor X, that was Mystique, a shapeshifter. I like that little touch of Nightcrawler disappearing and teleporting to the ground. Really cool, they know the characters, and watch out! Don't fall in the pit, Nightcrawler, come on! Okay, through the first five stages, we're sitting at $13.75. We're doing really well. We're nearing the end of the game. However, there's a couple boss gauntlets where they throw everything and then some at you. And of course, you have the final boss. I guess it's Wolverine's turn to try out the pit. All right, things are about to get real. Boss Gauntlet's gonna start with 12 pyros and four additional enemies, 16 enemies on screen, and it starts now. Robo with a clutch storm lightning tornado. Nice! Luckily for us, the pyros are much weaker than the stage one boss pyro. However, there's so many extra enemies, it's still very difficult. A great use of Colossus is special there. So here we have a boss against three pharaohs. I'm not sure if these are related to Apocalypse by chance, but either way, they can dish out some punishment. Oh, Panda Samurai, nice use of Nightcrawler's teleport right there. All right, let's use some mutant powers. We got them all in the corner here. Robo setting up Storm for the jump and dive attack. Nice! Dazzler with the clutch Sonic Light Blast. Nice, Valkyrie. Midnight with the Cyclops Optic Blast. Takes him out. We're down to the final Feral. Let's finish this strong. Now that's an explosion. All right, completed the mission. We're still doing really well. X-Men, X-Men. Magneto is planning to attack Earth from his asteroid base. You must foil his plan before it's too late. Go after the giant sentinel. And we're in the final stage. Through six stages, we're $16.50 in. We're doing really well. However, we have to fight numerous bosses and another boss gauntlet, and of course the final boss. So nothing's safe yet. Our quarter count is Midnight with Cyclops at 350, Endgame with Colossus at 325, Valkyrie with Dazzler at $3, Shinobi with Wolverine at $2.75, and then tied for the fewest quarters, we have Robo with Storm at $2, and also Panda Samurai with Nightcrawler at $2. Colossus leads with total kills with 224. So the final stage takes place on Asteroid M, which is Magneto's sanctuary away from the humans.
More Reavers to take out? Nice use of the mutant power, Nightcrawler. That's a Colossus special. Not to be confused with the Fastball special, where Colossus throws Wolverine. All right, time to stock up on this energy because the final boss gauntlet is about to begin. Here comes the blob. Boss number two, Wendigos join the fight. Boss number three, the White Queen is here too. So we're battling three bosses at one time. And these bosses definitely take more damage than the 12 Pyros did, that's for sure. Dazzler with another clutch Sonic Light Blast takes out the White Queen. All right, six on two. Here we go. Wendigo's down for good. The Blob is too. Nice. And just when you thought it was safe, here's Nimrod and Juggernaut. All right, let's take them out, guys. Come on. Don't go too far to the right, though, because then we might have another boss join the fight. So five straight bosses. Again, these bosses don't have as much energy as the first time that you battled them, but they're definitely tougher than those pyros, that's for sure. The quarter counts are creeping up. We took down Juggernaut, but we went too far to the right, and now Magneto's joined in with Nimrod. This makes six consecutive bosses in a row. Crazy stuff. All right, we gotta focus on Nimrod, take him out first, and then there'll be six on one. All right, we took out Nimrod. Six on one against Magneto, here we go. Magneto is the master of magnetism, and he has Professor X trapped in the back, and we have to take him out and save Professor X. Luckily, Magneto's only using his punches and kicks, and he's not using his mutant powers. All right, Magneto's flashing. Let's take him out quick here. All right, Magneto's down. Wait, it wasn't Magneto. It was Mystique the Shapeshifter again. Alas, that was Mystique, not Magneto. Magneto is at another place. Go, X-Men. That Mystique is pesky, and here comes the real Magneto with his full mutant powers. This is the final boss fight, and Magneto's not messing around. We're at an even $21 to start the final boss battle. That gives us $9 to finish him off. He's tough, but I think we can do it. Here we go, X-Men. Robo once again, nice tornado out of storm. Oh, Magneto taunting like Shao Kahn. Magneto taking us all out with sweet chin music. He's impervious to pain when he has the shield up like this. You just have to dodge and wait him out. Magneto with a knockout punch took out five X-Men with one punch. And now Magneto's using Storm's tornadoes against her. That's crazy. Kill 
The quarter totals are rising, but Magneto's finally in the orange flashing phase. He's weak. We got to take advantage and take him out. Magneto deflects another tornado. Endgame just put in $5. If he has to continue again, he's going to have to borrow a quarter. If there's any quarters left, let's do this, X-Men. All right, the shield's down. Unleash everything you have. Let's finish this right here, right now. Midnight's out of quarters. Borrow one of ours. We need you in here to finish this. Come on. There you go, Cyclops. Use those optic blasts. Magneto is not going to go down without a fight. He is dishing it out. Oh, come on. Come on. Cyclops with the final hit with the Optic Blast. Nice work, Midnight. Quarter well spent. Wow, that was a lot of fun playing six players with all the different mutant powers on two screens with 16 plus enemies on screen at a time. We had 12 pyros alone, three bosses at a time, crazy stuff. So the final quarter totals, Midnight as Cyclops with $5.25. Endgame as Colossus at $5. Valkyrie as Dazzler at $4.50. Shinobi as Wolverine at $4.25. Panda Samurai as Nightcrawler, $3.25 and our overall lowest quarter count is Robo with Storm at $3. Nice work Robo, nice work everyone. This was so much fun. Colossus had the overall most kills at 243 and Cyclops had the kill shot on Magneto bumping the kill total from 113 to 114. And of course the final quarter up had to go to Valkyrie and Dazzler. Typically Dazzler was the last character selected at the six player unit. All the other spots are always taken, and if you were the sixth player to join, you were getting Dazzler. After you complete the game, you actually start the game over, and you actually have to finish off all your lives before you get to input your initials. So these stats are a little bit different from when we finished it, but they overall are pretty similar to where we finished the game. So Endgame comes in first with Colossus at 243. Robo as Storm comes in second with 144 eliminations. Valkyrie as Dazzler comes in third with 134. Midnight as Cyclops comes in fourth with 125. Shinobi as Wolverine comes in fifth with 96. And Panda Samurai with Nightcrawler comes in sixth with 89 points. It was a great team effort. Some of the players had to utilize their mutant powers more often, which led to more deaths. So that meant other players had to stay alive more often to save those quarters. And we needed everyone. And that completes the X-Men six player quarter challenge. We each brought $5 in, that made it a $30 challenge and we completed it with a final cost of $25.25. I had no idea while we were playing if we were gonna complete it or not because midnight was over $5 and I was right at $5. I didn't know how the other players were doing, especially with all those people falling in the pits. It was great to see that some of the players made it through levels without having to use quarters. Nice job. Did you know four player versus six player? Real quick, I'm gonna show you the difference between the four player X-Men Arcade and the six player X-Men Arcade. So first off, you wanna go into your main wheel, which is your arcade classic wheel, and then you wanna click into that, and that'll bring you into your main main wheel. And if you're on an Arcade 1 setup, you can hit your genre button, which is top row button two. This will bring you into a sub wheel, which also has your trackball games and all the different genres. But we wanna find the four player games. We wanna select the one with the joystick and buttons and the Xbox controllers. That way we can play four players on the joystick and buttons and two players on the Xbox controllers. So there's an X-Men that's up to four players. And I added a second one that's up to six player X-Men with two screens. So on the left, we have the one screen, four player version. On the right, we have the two screen, six player edition. And while this is the same cutscene, they do splice it and present it differently on the one screen compared to the two screens. Very neat to see. Another difference is the size of the cabinet itself. Obviously the four player with one screen is gonna be a lot smaller than this mega two screen, six player edition. It's a massive machine. 
But there is nothing better in the arcades than seeing six people playing on the two screen X-Men six player arcade. It was an awesome sight to behold and you just wanted to join in, even if you had to be Dazzler a time or two. Not only is the opening cutscene different, but also the character select screen is different. On the four player version, you can select any of the six characters at any time from your same joystick and buttons. Whereas on the six player cabinet, you actually have to physically move to a different character. One downside though of the six player machine is that it's absolutely massive. And if the arcade owner kind of packed it in a corner next to another arcade, you might be in trouble if you have to take Dazzler on the side. She might be crammed against another unit and it's gonna be difficult to play as her. But if you have open space, this game is absolutely absolutely worth playing on the two screens with up to six players. And to wrap this up, I'm gonna show a little bit of gameplay. On the six player two screen version, there's a lot of real estate. You can maneuver around freely on both screens. All six players can go on either screen at any time. Whereas on the one screen four player version, all four characters have to stay on the screen and all the enemies are on the screen. So it can definitely get crammed quickly. However, on the six player, I believe they add more enemies based on how many players are playing. So this gives you just a taste of what the differences are between the four player and six player. And in my opinion, it's worth playing them both through just to see them for yourself. Tip flash trick, map in six players to joystick and buttons and Xbox 360 controllers. For this example, I'm gonna use my Arcade One Hyperspin build and the six player version of the game. You wanna turn on both your Xbox controllers before you go into the game. This may work in other versions as well, but I haven't physically tested those, so I can only comment on the Hyperspin build. My arcade supports up to four players with control stick and buttons, but I wanna play six players, so I'm gonna show you how to add those two additional Xbox controllers. You wanna boot up the game, let it all load in, and once it loads in, on your arcade one, you have a pause button. You wanna hit that pause button, and then that'll pause the screen. So I'm gonna hit pause here, and then I'm gonna hit tab on my keyboard. This will open up a menu, go down to input this machine, and now you'll see all six players in here. I already have players one through four mapped to my control stick and buttons. If I didn't, all you have to do is hit the select button on any of them, and then utilize your joystick or buttons, whatever direction or whatever function you want them to do. Do that for all four players, and then move down to players five and six, and we're gonna map those to our Xbox controllers. So here we're gonna start with player five. So I'm gonna start with P5 up, and I'm gonna hit the select button on the arcade one, and then I'm gonna push up on the left analog stick. P5 down, select on the arcade, down on the left analog stick. P5 left, select, we're gonna push left on the analog stick. P5 right, we're gonna hit select on the arcade one, and we're gonna push right on the left analog stick. P5 button one is your normal attack button. So I'm gonna hit select on the arcade one, and I'm gonna hit X on the Xbox 360 controller. P5 button two, that's gonna be your jump button. So I'm gonna hit select, and I like to map that to A button on the Xbox 360 controller. And P5 button three, that's gonna be your special mutant power button. And I like to map that to the Y button on the Xbox 360 controller. Moving on to player six. P6 up, you push up on the left analog stick. P6 down, you push down on the left analog stick. P6 left, you push left on the left analog stick. P6 right, you push right on the left analog stick. P6 button one is your attack, which I like to use for the X button. P6 button two, which is your jump, which I like to use for the A button. And P6 button three, which is your special mutant power, I like to use for the Y button. Next up, we have to map the start buttons for player five and six. So go to five players start and select the start button. And then you wanna make sure you push that on your player five controller. And then six players start, you wanna hit the start button on your player six controller. And now finally, we have to map the coin buttons. Same thing on your player five controller, select your coin five button and push the back button. And for your player six controller, you wanna hit coin six and you wanna hit your back button on player six. You should be good to go. Scroll down to return to previous menu, hit your select button, hit tab to exit the menu, and then you can unpause it. And then you can hit the coin button on all six players and make sure that all of them register. And then go into the game, test out all the buttons, make sure they all work for each of the players. And if they do, you are good to go. So this is player six, Dazzler. I can move her around. The punch works, the mutant power works, and the jump works. Now let's test player six. It's Nightcrawler, the jump works, the punch works, and the mutant power works. And I can move around just fine. So everything's registering as it should. So we're good to go. So now you can quit out. Just make sure both of your controllers are on when you enter the game. Otherwise, all those inputs, you'll have to redo them again. So I'm just doing this to show you that I just inputted everything in there. I saved it by exiting out, returning to previous menu, tabbing out, and then I unpaused the game, tested it, it all worked. I backed out, kept my controllers on, and now I'm going into the game. 
So all of my settings should hold. They'll only reset if I go into the game without the Xbox controllers on. So even if I'm not gonna use the Xbox controllers, you still wanna have them on if you're gonna go into the six player version. All right, let's hit tab. Let's go to input this machine and let's scroll down and check all the players. And it looks like all of the inputs are still there. So my four players with my joystick and buttons are there and my players five and six on the Xbox 360 controllers are there. So we're good to go. We can play the game and have fun. Six players, two screens on one monitor. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel grow. Give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite X-Men character is to play in this game. Do you prefer the four player cabinet or the six player cabinet? And if you are in a position that you would like to donate directly to the channel and help the channel grow even faster, then go ahead and click on the PayPal link in the description below. All donations go directly to the channel and it'll help me make even bigger, badder, better videos. Thank you for your support. And remember, we're in the end game now.